Today we're going to wrap up our discussion on inductance of an isolated conductor. I promise this is the last in this series. Uh, in the last two videos, we've seen uh, internal uh, uh, what the inductance is due to internal flux as well as what it is due to the external flux. So we're going to combine both of those here and uh, see what result we get. Uh, and anyone who hasn't seen the earlier two videos, I really encourage you to see those two because without them, without that background, you will not understand what we're going to be discussing today. Um, before I even do a recap though, uh, quick side note, uh, if you go to movingelectrons.com forward slash formulas, you'll be able to download a formula sheet that I've created containing all the formulas we've been discussing so far, as well as what some of those that we'll be discussing in the near future. Uh, everything related to power system analysis. Uh, once you download that, I will make sure any new formulas uh, that we discuss, I add that to that uh, list and uh, give you information about those and, and, and send those, a copy of those to you as well. Um, so that's one. The other thing uh, I'd really encourage you, if you like what, uh, what you see, if, if these videos are bringing any value to you, to please subscribe to uh, the moving electrons channel this tells me that someone is listening to these videos at the other end and encourage me encourages me to keep producing these videos to keep bringing some value uh, in this space to you all right now that that's out of the way let's do a quick recap of what we've seen in the earlier two videos as i mentioned so in the very first uh, part uh, when we were discussing this we derived the formulation for uh, the flux linkages due to internal flux that was 1 by 2 times 10 to the power minus 7 times i and as inductance is nothing but flux linkages over the current we got the inductance due to uh, the internal flux as 1 by 2 times 10 to the power minus 7 henry per meter if you remember we calculated everything on a per meter basis uh, in the last video, in the part two, we saw, or we rather derived uh, uh, our flux uh, linkages due to external flux as 2 times 10 to the power minus 7i into ln of d2 over d1, where d2 and d1 were the distances between which we were measuring our flux lines. Um, and again, L external, just lambda external over I was 2 times 10 to the power minus 7 ln of D2 over D1 Henry per meter. So in this video, what we'll do is we'll just combine these two and, and, and let me just draw a little diagram to show you what exactly we're talking about. Once again, looking at our cross section of our uh, cylindrical conductor, let's assume a point P at a distance D from the center of the conductor. Now we know the radius of our conductor is R and this distance from the center to this point P is let's say D. Okay. What we're going to measure is we're going to measure the so there are flux linkages. Now we've seen in the last two videos this flux linkage is internal as well as there are flux linkages external. And what we're going to study is what's going to be the inductance or rather what, what's going to be the flux linkages at this point P due to the current inside here due to flux inside our conductor that's passing through which is I, the current I, uh, due to flux linkages internal as well as external to the conductor. Now I'll give you, I know I've been talking about a little bit about why we are doing this. I'll give you a, one more step into that process. Imagine you have a transmission line with three conductors, right? And this is what this is where, where it'll get interesting in the videos to come where we're going to study this phenomenon. I just want to give you a brief preview of that so you understand why we are doing this. Let's imagine this is the point P we are talking about and this is this distance T. So what today's formulation is going to give us is it's going to allow us to study what this relationship is going to be. What's going to be the flux lines at this point where you have another conductor due to the current that's flowing in our this conductor, right? And what's going to be the interplay between all of these three? So we'll, we'll kind of study that in, in the next uh, couple of videos. But I just wanted to give you why we are doing this so you understand why this formulation is important. All right, let's get into the uh, derivation right away. This one's going to be very, very straightforward. Uh, it's There's going to be a small uh, 
mathematical manipulation we do in between and and that's kind of why we want to run this by you so step one what's going to be our flux linkage at point p it's going to be due to the current here remember this is an isolated conductor we've imagined even the return conductor is, is at a distance far far away so your only flux linkage at this point is due to the internal flux linkage of this conductor plus the external flux linkages of this conductor so from here we know what that is that's going to be 1 by 2 times 10 to the power minus 7 i plus 2 times 10 to the power minus 7 i ln of d2 over d1 what's d2 in this this in this case d2 is the fur further distance right so that's d and what's uh, what is d1 in this case d1 is r let me repeat that once again so let me actually let's go back to what we drew in our last video right so we had a conductor and we had flux lines here and here and then we said we were considering a point r at a distance r right so this was r uh, sorry this was x between d2 and d1 so this was d1 and this was d2 and our radius was r so this is where we derive d2 over d1 now in this case i want you to imagine this point x has been moved to this line uh, this flux line where you see d2 that's the distance where we're considering x right and d1 this flux line has been moved down here to the um, uh, to the outer surface of your conductor so your d1 basically gets reduced to r and your d2 becomes this distance all the way okay I'll just give you a brief second to digest that. So D1 is the outside of the conductor and D2 is where this point P is. So if I draw this again, let me, let me see where I can find some space. Let me just erase this. Let me just erase this. Because once you understand this, then there's there's really nothing much else in this derivation to understand. Rest is all math. Um, that's your conductor. D1, just imagine this is a circle. So that's D1. That is D2. This is the radius R our x or in this case point p is here that's the distance d so your d1 is nothing but the radius which is r and d2 is nothing but uh, d in this case right so we're going to do that because we want to be able to find the uh, the relationship at any point at a distance p right so you're considering from all the way from R to that point P, all the way from this point to this point. You're studying all the flux lines, all yeah, the impact of all of those there, right? So therefore you have D over R. Okay, now starts our mathematical manipulation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring out the term two into 10 to the power minus seven and I outside. What does that leave us here with? That leaves us here with 1 by 4 plus ln of d over r. Okay, let's do one more interesting thing. 2 into 10 to the, uh, the power minus 7 i. 1 by 4 can be written as ln of e to the power 1 by 4.
this is because ln of e to the power 1 by 4 is nothing but 1 by 4. So we use this property of ln and e and then we write 1 by 4 as ln of e times 1 by 4. I hope you see where this is going because we're going to write this as ln of e to the power 1 by 4 times d or r. We can do this because ln of a plus ln of b is nothing but ln of ab. So we're using this property to say ln of a plus ln of b is nothing but ln of a times b. And then we are going to do one more interesting step which is going to be we're going to write this, we're going to bring this e uh, times 1 by 4 into the denominator and write that as e times e to the power minus 1 by 4 times r and that becomes our equation for lambda p. I'm going to do, if you notice here, e to the power minus 1 by 4, if you type that in your calculators, it's going to be a constant value which is 0 0.7788. So that implies that e to the power minus 1 by 4 times r can be written, can be written as 0.7788r. We are going to call this term or this value as r prime. So r prime, you get that from the radius of your conductor, you multiply that by 0.7788. So that gives us lambda p as 2, 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 times i ln of d over r prime. And the units, let me just write down the units. Let's never forget the units is Weber turn per meter and r prime is equal to 0.7788 r. So you have that equation and from this it's very easy to get what your inductance at that point would be. That is nothing but uh, lambda p over i which implies your inductance is 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 ln of d over r prime Henry per meter and once again r prime is 0.7788 r and let me just highlight that for you as well. Now if you observe this equation is very similar to one other equation we've already seen up here. So this is 2 into 10 to the power minus 7 ln of d over r prime. This is exactly like this equation. So if, And this is the equation for L external. So here though we've combined internal and external values, the end result you have looks very similar to the values we received for flux linkages external to the conductor only. So what has happened here is to account for the internal flux, we've taken the radius into consideration, but that the, um, what should I say, the effective radius has been reduced. So your effective radius of the conductor is now 0.7788 of your original, uh, original radius. And by doing that, we account for all the internal flux because now the formula you have here looks very similar to what you had when you use just external flux, right? So that's a key observation that comes out of here. So I want you to remember these formulas. Uh, once again, they're all in the formula sheet and any discussion we have in the future, I'll obviously be doing a recap as I always do. Um, and we'll use this in the next videos as well. What we're going to do next time is we're going to see flux linkages of a single conductor due to uh, many conductors in a group. So uh, what am I saying here is 
we're going to so far we've seen an isolated conductor right in the next video we're going to see let's say you have a conductor here uh, and you have a conductor here you have a conductor here you have many conductors here so you have conductors one through n and uh, what is going to be the impact due to currents in all these conductors at point P. So we're going to kind of study that in, and I'm going to go in and explain uh, the concepts related to that. But these formulas will be, will be useful there as well. And then we'll develop that into uh, single phase and uh, three phase configurations in the following videos. Uh, so stick around, that'll get more interesting. We'll solve some problems there and uh, uh, that's a little bit more of a, a, a real world uh, scenario. Uh, so till next time, um, uh, enjoy yourselves. Uh, if you have any comments, any questions, if anything's not clear, if I've gone too fast, gone too slow, please leave your comments below and I'll try to address them as soon as I can. can. And uh, take care. Bye-bye.